All right, so editing is one of those things where there's so many different programs, just within a single program, there's so many different techniques to use and there's tutorials everywhere. So I figured I'd just show you sort of what I do. I feel like it's pretty basic, uh, but does a great job. I wanted to show you a couple images from this recent portrait shoot I did. So first thing I do is just go through uh, photo mechanic and just sort through all the images, tag the ones I want to end up editing, just sort of get it down from the 2000 I took during the shoot and I got it down to about 190 photos. So then I put those 190 into Lightroom. I'll go through quickly and mark those again of which ones I want. You know, some of them are really similar, so I'll pick the one out of the two or three that I kept from the original batch. I'll give them like a one to two star rating and the twos being the ones I really wanna make sure that I edit and the ones just sort of extra in case it's something I like and I don't have something similar to it later down the line. So once I do that, right, you can see here, I have a bunch of two stars. I've already edited some of these, so there's even a couple, there's threes, fours, and fives. So the two that I wanna show you today that I edited, let's go with these, these five stars, go to the develop tab. Honestly, like I already like this image, how it looks right now. Looks pretty good, but everything can help a little bit. So this is what it looked like before I did any adjustments in Lightroom. And you can see over here that up the exposure a little bit, up the shadows, down the highlights, darken the blacks, up the whites a little bit. A little vibrance. So when I know that I'm gonna Photoshop these images, I typically up the shadows, down the highlights, just to give myself more range in Photoshop to play with, just to, I can darken things in there or lighten them up more easily if I have just sort of a flatter image to work with. So from there, I put it into Photoshop. Edit with the Lightroom adjustments. All right, perfect. So I do have an action set up for this setup down here. You can see it's F1 if I click it. See all these things pop up and that's just so I don't have to do it every time it comes up. So I basically duplicate the background and then I add a levels adjustment layer, a curves, color balance, and then dodge and burn. You can do the, this more just like lighten and Darken, I honestly forget which dodge and burn goes with what. So it makes more sense if I do lighten and darken. So, and then I put those all into a group. That way I can see easily and quickly just what the effects are having for the total group versus what I originally started with. So I always start with the levels, click over here. You can see that there's not a ton of highlights right now. So typically drag these down a little bit. I don't want to go too far and overexpose her face. All right, and then we can see the blacks. Bring that in a little bit. All right, it looks pretty contrasty. This middle one, typically what I do is I lighten the image a little bit using that. That way when I do the curves, I'll typically add a little bit more contrast from that levels layer. So if we look at just the levels, it's before and after with the levels. And then if we add the curves in, darkens that up just a little bit more. All right, and then if we wanna see both, we can undo the group and go back and forth. So already it's just got a little bit more punch, a little more pop to it. Now color balance, it's something that I don't do all the time, but I need to start doing because I do think it just adds a lot to images. And it's a small thing that you can do. It does take a little bit of tweaking and adjusting, um, but it, I think it helps a lot. And I don't really have a general rule of thumb on which colors to use where. What I've recently been doing is I'll add a little bit of blue to the shadows. And you can see, right, you can go way too far, add a little yellow. All right, and this is how you can just sort of like get a look to your images. Adds that little extra piece of, oh, that looks a little different, but I'm not exactly sure why. And so a lot of times, honestly, I just play with these until I sort of see what I want. I don't want anything to be too crazy, right? You can see just a little bit of blue in those shadows. And I kind of like how you can see under this bridge on the right side, it's very shadowed, very blue. And then when I go to the highlights, I'll sort of do the opposite, add a little bit more warmth back into that photo. On her skin tones, looks pretty nice. And you just get that contrast between the blue and the orange yellow. And then we'll see any of these other colors, just slight adjustments. Yeah, warm it up a little bit. 
So you can see that before and after with just the color. Just gives it a nice little extra element to the photo. And then if we want to lighten and darken a little bit, so if we, let's say we want to lighten up her face a little bit, I'll go to the brush tool. I have this set to soft light and the flow up here is at 1%, opacity 20, um, just so it's nice and subtle. And when I paint this in here, you're not gonna see a ton of difference right away. So I'm painting sort of on that little shadowed area. Just bring her face, lighten it up a little bit. So we can see what we just did. All right, it's really subtle. And if we wanna add more, you just keep painting on top of there. Change the brush size down, make it a little bit smaller too. On the arm, just sort of define those muscles a little bit. And so we can also, you can check in again there. All right, just brightening it up a little bit. And then if we wanna darken, then we can switch this over to black. It's also on soft light, so it's just, again, it's just really subtle. Paint this here on the arm. Honestly, it looks pretty good. There's not a ton to add here with the that. Just sort of gives a little bit of it more definition there. All right, so when that's, and then I'll add a gradient layer, change it to radio, reverse, and I want the black there. So depending on how much I want here. So I'll typically where I want the viewer to focus in this image, mainly on the face. So I will use this radio filter to focus that image ever so slightly on her face. So it's on normal blend mode right now. If I put it to soft light, so you can see what's happening. It's basically putting a vignette on the photo. If you do, right, so you can see it before and after. Now it's a little too much, so we can drop this opacity down. So what this is doing is really just keeping the focus on her, on the model, and sort of darkening the, these brighter spots so it forces the viewer's eye back to the model. All right, with that, you might want to lighten these back up a little bit. Lightening this up. just to give a little bit more detail in these shadow spots. You can see that little before and after, right? It doesn't do a ton. If you want it to do more, you can increase the flow and you can see, you can actually sort of paint on there. And you can see it's more defined that way, which we don't want, that's a little too much. So keep that flow down and paint over top. All right, so I think that's pretty good for now. And next thing I wanna do is sharpen images. So typically what I do is I'll merge the layers. I have another action to set up a high pass filter. And that's F2. So if I click it, it'll automatically create. All it does is duplicate this layer. Then you add a high pass filter. And you can see that's probably a little much. When I'm doing the high pass, I don't I want to I want to be able to see the outlines that are sharp, but I don't want it to be so defined that you sort of see the entire picture. So typically between like one and a half to three pixels, depending on the image you have. Two and a half looks pretty good. Then again, change this to soft light. And this just makes it a little bit more crisp, a little bit more pop to it. You can't even tell that big a difference when you're turning it on and off from here. If you zoom in, maybe a little too far there on the zoom. All right. So if you zoom in, right, you can see a little bit more definition on the face, the hair, texture. Just helps just that tiny little bit. Once that's done, saves it back to Lightroom. It's so there, you can really see the difference of the before and afters. Then I can do the next image if I want to, send it over to Photoshop, right? I'll set up the same thing, 
do my levels, curves, color balance. You can see the big difference there in the colors. Just gives it a different feel for the image depending on what your personal preference is. All right, and then after I do it again, I'll send it, I send it back to Lightroom. And the thing you really gotta be careful with is these files, when they go back, it saves as a TIFF, and the files can be anywhere from a half gig to like two gigs. So if you're doing a bunch of files, it adds up pretty quick and you're gonna fill up a lot of space on your computer. Just once you're done, export those JPEGs and you can delete those TIFFs if you're not gonna really go back and edit again. All right, so I hope that helps. If you have any other questions about how I edit, uh, feel free. I took all these tips from a bunch of other videos I watched. These are the basic ones that I liked. So, see you next time.